We now invite you to watch the next part of this insightful lecture entitled The Power of Independence, part 4 of 6 on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on October 29, 1993 in Los Angeles, USA. Any questions? Hmm? Good questions. Don't try to catch my attention with nonsense and garbage, because you know what, what will, will come, right? <laughs> Thunder and typhoon <laughs> and rain, right? <laughs> Any problems here? No. Any questions? I tell you, there's no problem really, right? Always try to check up on your complaint, whether it is true. But if you meditate more, you go to group meditation more, you're always better, or not. Yes. yes. And the power of group meditation washes you clean. Look at those who don't come to group meditation. Don't you see the big difference? Yes. yes. Even the worst, <laughs> even the worst in our group, but he comes to meditate often, He's better than the ones who are not coming to group meditation. Is that not so? Yes. yes. And when you come to group meditation, you lose nothing. You don't even have to pay anything. Why not come? Right? right. You lose nothing. What's, what's the difficulty? Hmm? Now, this center is lousy, I know. <laughs> it's far away from it all, but that's what you need. You need to get away for a while, once a week, twice a week, right? And I know you sit under a plastic seat, but that's better than all the best temples that we know. <laughs> I'm proud of you, I told you already. You train yourself to bear the hardship so that you concentrate more on high thinking. I'm very happy, yes. God loves you more than any other group because you are very forbearing and self-sacrifice. And you, you learn with me, you support my ideals of putting other people's immediate needs before ourselves. And God loves you. I'm sure God loves you. Even if sometimes I scold you because of some of your obstacles, yeah? I'm proud of you and I truly love you and respect you very much for all you have done and for all your struggle. But don't be too proud and then make trouble to, for me tomorrow. <laughs> yeah? Whenever I praise you, keep your ego locked in a toilet or somewhere <laughs> so it doesn't make trouble, all right? It happens with our immediate disciples. Whenever I pr praise him, immediately, half an hour later or tomorrow, he makes a mess of everything. Normally he does everything in a good way, and I say, wow, you're so good lately. I'm very pleased with you. Thank you very much. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. Tomorrow he gives me all kinds of unimaginable trouble, unexpected <laughs> a hindrance, you know what I mean? I don't know where from. So I very seldom I'm very uh, sparesome with praises because I'm afraid that it hurts you because you can't handle it. Like children can't handle diamonds or money. Not that the parent doesn't want to give children a lot of money or his child a lot of money, but he's too young to handle good things. Now you give your child a real diamond to wear to go to school, <laughs> then you, you kill her, right? <laughs> because other people will. Yeah, that's why God saved everything for us until we're ready to receive it. So don't hurry to ask for anything. Just do your duty. God always takes care, doesn't He? Yes. yes. <laughs> and don't bother to get any praise for me because you know what a mess you will do with it. Yeah, most of the time, 
right? But just today, because of the fire, I was emotionally uh, attacked, so I forgot. I praise you a little bit, but I can take it back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful always when people praise you. Maybe they want something from you, or maybe you'll be too proud of yourself. Both cases always have trouble. I remember reading in the newspapers, well, this is not very good, but uh, maybe it's a good example, that one of the, the, the ladies, you know, she says she, she always uh, gets the man she wants, because whenever she wants one, she comes and praises him. She doesn't introduce herself. She just says whatever good man he is. She tries to find out a good spot about him, and she praises for that. And every time the man fell, <laughs> superhero fell, like a noodle. Yes. <laughs> Same with woman also, huh? Same with me, perhaps. No, just come and praise me and see how, how <laughs> see how weak I become. <laughs> It's good that you praise me too much all the time, so now I get uh, kind of uh, used to it. Yeah? Like you take too many uh, medicines and it becomes, <laughs> how say, no use, right? So keep praising me, it's okay. Practice is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> because you praise me too many times, therefore I become immune to it now. <laughs> so if other people praise me, maybe I won't fall so easily, right? So protect me, okay? <laughs> Uh, what else did I want to tell you? Are you cold? No. All right? Yes. If you're too cold, then, you know, knit together. No, only woman and woman, man and man. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it will be more uncomfortable <laughs> in the long term. <laughs> well, unless you want to have trouble yourself, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? In India, uh, so many of our gatherings, we have to put men and women separately, because normally we have too many people, right? So we have to sit sometimes very closely. So that uh, is more relaxed for you in this way. <laughs> in case my speech is so boring and you fall asleep on the... the, the neighbor's shoulder is okay if it's, a, uh, if it's only a boy, you know, or a woman uh, of the same sex, you know. If you fall on the opposite sex, it might cause you problems. <laughs> Understand? So it's very convenient, don't complain. Huh? <laughs> but we don't always uh, put that as priority. Understand? There was sometimes when I call you or you come to see me quickly, you're all mixed together and take the opportunity. <laughs> Make the best of the situation. <laughs> but I don't think you ever do, right? Because every time you see me, it seems like only me exists in this world. Yeah. I feel <laughs> I feel very strongly. Yes. That's why I'm sometimes very scared. I'm scared. I have to protect that person, old person, small children, or just uh had babies. I uh, yesterday, you know, she just had a baby a few weeks ago. And then she came to see me and stood on the edge of the road. And people would just push and then she would be out. So I saw that. I said, oh, please protect her. I told two of the strong men. I said, come around and protect her, because she might be still weak. But maybe she's not that weak. Maybe she's stronger than me, but I feel, you know, I feel maybe she's still weak, yeah, from the labor. So I said, you, 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 the two strong men, protect her. I said, yes, yes, master, but they keep looking at me all the time. <laughs> it seems like they hear nothing I say. I don't know what that person is. I said, hear this one, she just had a baby, she just had a baby, did you hear me? They say, yes, yes, master, yes. And they keep staring at me all the time <laughs> and don't move. <laughs> so therefore, sometimes you see in the crowd, I'm sometimes panic this and that. Because of this situation, I see a child in the front and you, in the back, you did not see. And other people don't protect him. Even if you love me, you have to protect your neighbors, all right? Look before you trample. Watch before you push. <laughs> yes. Because in the crowd, it's just easy to lose your control. Huh? So always be careful, all right? Be gentle. Hmm? I will be always around for a few more decades, maybe, yeah. And if I'm not around, your inner master will be around. So don't push, huh? And protect the weak, the old, yeah? And uh, 
small woman and that, like me, like you protect me, okay? <laughs> okay, that's it, give me a big applause and I will disappear. <laughs> Now, remember, remember the volunteer work for the fire, huh? And remember why we never have temples, huh? Because the world is always full of disasters. We just relieved the flood victims of the five states, and now comes the big fire in Los Angeles. Just last year or so, it was an earthquake, and before that, it was a flood also, and heat, or other things or dry season, no water, like in California. The last six years, it did not rain until that man who, who believed that I could make rain. Yeah, and then it rained. It rained so much. And then you complain that it rained too much. <laughs> now, he believed that I make rain. I didn't know whether I could make rain or not, but after that it rained a lot. Maybe, maybe I make rain, but I never rain. <laughs> I never do any raining. <laughs> but until that man said so, huh? Six years. Well, that's a long time. So, you see, California is a fantastic place. Everybody likes to stay here, including all the ex presidents. Yeah. But then it always has trouble because not many people appreciate God's grace and handle the grace disrespectfully. Therefore, the guardian angels of justice have to sometimes remind people with quakes, with fires, with floods and all that. That's why the best gift we can give to mankind is to teach them to avoid disaster altogether, not to relieve it. Understand what I mean? Not to relieve it, but because there are many people who don't heed that. They will have the individual or collective karmas. So therefore, we always have to put our effort out for them and be patient, wait until they grow up spiritually. And then maybe they in turn will help other younger, younger souls who do not yet understand that they should seek first God before anything else, and then they will have everything, right? Like me. Mm. <laughs> like me, huh? I have everything, <laughs> including beautiful disciples. But we don't have it for ourselves. God gives us so many things and a lot of financial means, but we never have anything for long. <laughs> for example, I always have $10,000 in my pocket, but before I know it, it's gone. <laughs> as soon as I know it, it's gone. You know, always handy. Something there and somebody there, 1,000 here, you know, 500 there, and then it's gone before I know it. And then some other time I forgot that it's gone. I searched for it. I said, how come you didn't give me any money? I complained. They said, we just gave it you a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have everything, but I don't have anything as also. I have so many centers in the world, all belong to me, my name. But you know, I never stay there. I don't sleep there maybe two or three days at most, with a lot of patience and endurance. <laughs> because you'll be around 24 hours, sneaking around, <laughs> yeah, and peeping uh, in, uh, inside out, you know, or uh, watering mouth and waiting outside somewhere, or praying, oh, Master, if you're really a sacred person, you must know my prayer, I want to see you right now. <laughs> yes. So I can never sleep. You know what I mean? Even one person makes noise. That disturbs me. So sometimes you see me going barefooted outside in a sleeping dress or, you know, half eyes closed. Yeah, because of these are lousy, sincere seekers. <laughs> and you can't blame them, you can't say they are not sincere. But sincere for what? <laughs> <laughs> 